How's it going guys? The NHL Expansion Protected list came out today, so I figured why not do a Vegas Golden Knights Expansion Draft. Obviously we'll know in a few days who the actual team is, but everyone's just speculating like crazy who Vegas is going to take off of their team, so I figured I would share my thoughts with you guys. So starting off here, I'm just going to do it alphabetically basically. We have the Anaheim Ducks. Now, there are two big players available, are Sammy Vatnin and Josh Manson, and I really believe um, for sure they're not losing Manson. I feel like if that was even a possibility, they would have bought out Bieksa and not even had him available. So um, the popular rumor is they made a deal with Vegas where basically um, they're allowing Vegas to take Vatanen and in exchange they're going to get something from Vegas, whether that's one of the forwards Vegas picks, possibly like a first round pick that Vegas is going to get from another team or something along those lines. Now it's either that or they're actually going to be giving up one of their young defensemen who aren't even a part of the expansion draft like Theodore or Larson plus some picks for Vegas to not take Vatanen or Manson. So um, since I really don't know the particulars, I'm just going to assume for sure Manson's off the table for whatever reasons, and maybe it's the Vatanen thing where Anaheim's letting Vatanen be exposed, and in exchange they're going to get something from Vegas, which is still a pretty good deal for Vegas. Um, obviously, Vatanen's also a more offensive defenseman, and as you guys will notice, most of the defensemen Vegas are going to get in this draft are kind of more defensive, so um, even though Josh Manson's a very good defensive defenseman, Vatanen is one of the few defensemen available that actually has that offensive skill set. Uh, so moving on out of the Arizona Coyotes, the Coyotes really don't have a lot of available at all, like... Um, just a lot of bad players here. So, so I'm going to take Brad Richardson simply because he's got one year left on his deal at $2 million, which isn't too bad. Um, and all the other guys here aren't even signed. So you're only allowed to actually take 10 players that aren't under contract. And there's a lot of better players that aren't under contract. Um, especially like obviously the RFAs. Those are the ones that Vegas will have the best chance to sign because once they become an RFA, they can only sign with Vegas unless someone wants to make them a qualifying offer. So uh, we'll just go with Brad Richardson here. It's kind of a wasted pick essentially. Um, next up with Boston Bruins. So Boston does have some stuff available, but I think the best pick here is Malcolm Subban. A good young goalie, um, probably continue playing in the AHL for a couple of years. Obviously Vegas could take like six goalies, but you can only have two in the NHL, two in the AHL. So after four, it's like, where are you going to play these guys? So I think I end up taking four goalies. Uh, we will see though. You can see there's some decent defensemen available, some decent forwards, but uh, especially the forwards like Bluskin and Hayes, way overpaid. Uh, I'm not going to do Boston any favors. Next up here we have Buffalo. So Buffalo also doesn't have that much great stuff available. Um, as you can see, looking through here, the best player available, I think, without a doubt, is Zach Goshen. 26-year-old defenseman, pretty solid. Now, he has a big cap, but he's getting paid just under $5 million. The thing is, I think it's worth taking him. He's 26. It's not like he's old and has a big cap like that. Somebody say, like, Dustin Brown or Marion Gabrick. He's still pretty young at 26. And I think I'm going to take him for that reason as he honestly could be a good sturdy defenseman for Vegas. And obviously they do have to hit the cap floor. And I have a feeling like what Vegas is going to do and what I'm going to do in this uh, mock draft is basically try and take like the lowest cap hits possible. And then if I do end up spending money or if Vegas ends up spending money in this case, obviously, um, it'll be on UFAs opposed to helping a team out by removing a bad contract. Uh, the only way I see Vegas taking on a bad contract is if the team is willing to give them a pick, prospect, whatever. Uh, next up we have Calgary. So for Calgary... There's a few players in mind for me. It was either Shinkurok, Poirier, um, or Kulak. And I think they're going to go Kulak just because defensemen have a bit more value than forwards. And Vegas is already going to get a ton of pretty good forwards anyways. So I think they can go with Kulak here over either Shinkurok or Poirier. Uh, next up, Carolina. Kind of like Arizona, there's really not much here. So again, I'm just going to go with Stemniak, a 34-year-old veteran. One year left on his deal at $2.5 million, So kind of like a prime candidate to flip at the trade deadline. Um, like Richardson potentially too, but Semyak for sure, it's a low cap hit, not going to like break the bank or anything like that, and them taking Cam Ward or Eddie Lack from Carolina would honestly be a favor to Carolina, so only way that happens is if Carolina pays Vegas, which at this time I don't believe is a deal happening. Uh, next up we have Chicago, so the popular rumor out there, which I think is true as there's like, it makes a lot of sense, is uh, Chicago didn't trade TVR before the expansion draft to allow Vegas to take TVR, and in exchange, Vegas is also going to take Marcus Kruger, so it'll probably be something like future considerations for Marcus Kruger, in which case um, Vegas just never gives them anything for him. They're just taking him off Chicago's hands. So, I mean, Vegas getting TVR and Marcus Kruger uh, for free, essentially, that's a pretty solid deal for them from Chicago. A lot of people think Polka is the better defenseman than TVR, but I mean, in this case, uh, Vegas is getting two players for the price of one. I'd say TVR and Polka are pretty equal. TVR is more NHL proven. Polka has a bit more potential, but I think it's a good deal for Vegas either way. Next up here, we have Colorado. So uh, Colorado had a couple interesting players. Uh, for me, it came down to basically Greg Ranko or Picard. And I went with Picard some because he's a good young goalie, just played for Canada at the World Championship. And I think he's probably a better asset at this time than Greg Ranko, who really just didn't meet his potential. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets here. So this is another team that there's apparently a deal between. The big rumor out there is that Columbus offered a first round pick 
and a prospect. Uh, I'm not sure who the prospect is, but it's definitely not like Dubois or Milano, as well as David Clarkson's contract, who Vegas can just put on LTIR so they don't have to pay him. And in exchange, Vegas promised to take either William Carlson or Matt Calvert. So basically what that does for Columbus is it allows them to keep Josh Anderson, who's a good young forward. Um, it also allows them to keep Jack Johnson, probably their top four with Savard, Jones, and Renski. And it also allows them to keep Corpy Salo, who's a really good young goalie, and will probably take over for Bobrovsky within the next, you know, two or three years. So um, if that is the deal, I think they probably take Carlson over Calvert. He's younger, he's cheaper, has more potential. It just makes a lot of sense. Uh, next here we have Dallas Stars. So... Dallas has some decent guys available. You got like Eakin there, Hamus, um, Alexiak's not too bad. Goalies, obviously, they're not taking Lettner and Niemi. Kind of like Carolina, that would be doing Dallas a favor. So I'm actually going to take Eakin here. I think he's a really solid third line center. 3.8 million is pretty good value for him as well. Not too old either at 26. So uh, solid pickup there for Vegas. And next year, we have my favorite team, the Detroit Red Wings. So uh, they actually have a lot of players available. You can see they have a lot of forwards there with Helm, Sheehan, Glenn Denning. Defense, you have Cronwall, who's old and injury riddled, so they're not taking him. Erickson getting like overpaid, he's old. Uh, Sproul's not bad, same with Olette. And then in goal there, they have Mrazic. This one, I still can't believe what Holland was thinking. I don't know why he would protect Howard, who's like 33 over Mrazic, who's 25. But uh, at the end of the day here, I think Vegas might honestly pass on Mrazic. As you guys will see later on, they're going to have other goalies they're going to pick. Mrazic's making $4 million. They could use that money elsewhere. He's only got one year left on the deal as well, so... I think Vegas is actually going to take Riley Sheehan, who as an overall player is probably better than Spruler Olette, and they're already going to get a ton of defense from other teams, and then like I said, I think they're going to be getting a better goalie than Mrazic. Obviously, they're going to get Flurry from Pittsburgh, and as you've seen in this draft, they already have Picard and Subban, so two pretty good young goalies, which means I think they pass on Mrazic, as you can't take too many goalies, because like let's say Vegas ends up with six, seven goalies, there's only four spots for them to play, and if you want to try and trade them to teams, teams might just be like, we're not trading you for those goalies, in which case, you just have like a surplus of goalies, nothing to do with them, you kind of screw yourself, so I think Holland might luck out here and have Vegas not take Mrazic, but if they do take Mrazic, I'll be pissed, but I think it's Sheehan, we'll have to wait and see. Um, for Edmonton here, this is another tough one, I think it's going to be either Reinhardt or Brassois, but kind of like Mrazic, there's better goalies available than Brassois, and I think Griffin Reinhardt, even though he hasn't really shown his potential for a fourth overall pick, the potential might still be there, and with the Oilers, there's really nothing better you can take, so why not take a chance on Reinhardt, hope he turns out, and if not, you're getting him for free anyway, so who cares. After that, guys, we have the Florida Panthers, so this is a pretty easy pick for me. Uh, basically, it's either between Riley Smith um, and Jonathan Marchesu, and I think Marchesu at the same age, 750k cap hit though, so f over $4 million cheaper, he put up 30 goals last year, I don't know why Florida would have Marchesu not protected, but I feel like that's a steal of a pick for Vegas, uh, next up here, LA Kings, so this is another pretty easy one, the forwards available, you either get Brown and Gabrick who are in their 30s and way overpaid, um, a fourth line forward, or you get Braid McNabb, so obviously I think Vegas is going to go with Braid McNabb there from LA, uh, Minnesota here, like Anaheim, uh, this is a team with two very good defensemen available in Scandella and Dumba. And as far as I know, Minnesota has no deal made with Anaheim. Um, they also even have Eric Stahl available. So a lot of good options here, but I think if I'm Vegas, I'm going with Dumba. Obviously, Vegas isn't going to compete anytime soon. Dumba's five years younger, slightly better cap hit. And like I was saying, kind of like Vatnin, there really aren't that many offensive defensemen available. So uh, Vatnin and Dumba would definitely fill that void. Whereas all the other defensemen like McNabb and other guys I'm going to draft later on, you'll see, are just more defensive. So Dumbo, I think, is a huge pick for Vegas. Um, him and Vatnin are probably the two best picks so far. Uh, Montreal here, so this is another tough one. Um, you got Placanix, who's way overpaid at $6 million. Jacob De La Rose isn't too bad of a young winger, but I think they're actually going to take Brandon Davidson. Uh, reason being, like I said earlier, you can only take 10 players that aren't under contract. Obviously, Jacob De La Rose isn't, so you really have to be surrounded with those 10 players under contract you take. And earlier on in the year, when Davidson was still in Edmonton, uh, the very, very popular opinion was the fact that Vegas was going to take him. So he's now available in Montreal. Vegas still likes him. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't take him now from Montreal Canadiens. So he could definitely be a solid top six defenseman for them. Solid cap hit as well. Uh, really no reason not to do that. Uh, next up here with the Nashville Predators. And they're kind of getting screwed here. So they basically had to decide between protecting James Neal or Yarnock. Yarnock signed at $2 million for like the next five years. Crazy good cap hit. Um, he's of course a player of the Red Wings trade away. But that means they had to not protect James Neal, who obviously a very good goal scorer. Only has one year left on his deal at $5 million. But basically, 
I see Vegas taking him unless Nashville makes a deal. And I mean, honestly, even if Vegas wants to trade him, because he has one year left, like he'd be a great player to trade the deadline. They could for sure get a first round pick for him. Um, this is just a great pick for Vegas. Neil's probably honestly the best forward they're going to get from this expansion draft as well. Next up here with the New Jersey Devils. So this is a tough one. It's basically between Mike Camilleri, who's older, making $5 million for a couple years. Smith Pelly is younger, but obviously not as good a player. Or you're getting a decent defenseman like Lovejoy or Merrill. So I think they'll probably go with Camilleri here. Even though he has a $5 million cap, it's only for two more years. And Camilleri is a good scorer when he's healthy. Uh, next up here with the Islanders. So and the popular rumor with the Islanders is that they're going to give Vegas a first round pick to not pick one of their forwards. So um, some good forwards available here would be Ryan Strome, Brock Nelson. Uh, that's pretty much it, actually. The rest of the guys are basically okay. So to not pick Ryan Strome or Brock Nelson, apparently New York Islanders are giving Vegas a first round pick. But on defense here, Calvin DeHaan still available. So... Calvin DeHaan in a first round pick to not take, say, Ryan Strom. Uh, seems like pretty good value to me. Next up here with the New York Rangers. Uh, this is a tough one as well. I was trying to decide between Grabner and Ranta. And at the end of the day, I ended up going with Grabner. Uh, basically, the reason for this, like I said, there's already so many good goalies available. Fleury, I think, is going to be the starting goalie for this team. You guys will see in a couple picks who the backup is. And then in the AHL, our two young goalies are already Picard and Subban. So, where Ranta fits, I don't know. And Grabner had a very good year last year. He had almost 30 goals. And he's only making one and a half million, so pretty tough to pass up on that. Uh, next year with the Ottawa Senators, so no deal in place so far, as far as I know, with the Ottawa Senators. But I could definitely see them making a deal to keep Mark Mathot. Obviously, Eric Carlson's D pair. Um, what it would cost them? Probably not even a first round pick. Honestly, I could see them having only give up like a second round pick, maybe uh, for Vegas to not take Mathot. But in exchange, Vegas is probably going to take Clausen, who's still a pretty good defenseman and younger. So I mean, if I'm Vegas and Ottawa says, I'll give you a second to not take Mathot, and I can still get Clausen with that second, I feel like that's a pretty good trade-off. And that's basically what Vegas is going to be doing throughout here. They're just trying to get picks, get young prospects, and young players uh, to build for the future. They know they're not going to win anytime soon, so really no reason to take a lot of these veterans unless they're kind of like your only option in terms of actual value. Um, otherwise, if there's like a better option with younger players and picks, Vegas is going to do that every single time. That way they are just loaded four or five years down the road when they've got all these prospects that are finally making the jump. Um, it is just going to be crazy. Uh, next year, the Philadelphia Flyers really don't have a lot available. So for that reason, I'm going to take Jordan Wheel. Uh, he's a guy that's been playing in the AHL for most of like his career, but played pretty good at the end of last year. And unlike all these other forwards, making like no money. Actually, actually he's currently unrestricted, but I feel like if they took one of these forwards here, they might honestly be doing the Flyers a favor, just helping them out for cap reasons. So... Like I was saying before, I, th I think the Golden Knights are trying to spend the least amount of possible here with players they're picking. Uh, where they spend the money will definitely be in free agency as well as taking back bad contracts um, just for, you know, huge overpayments like first round picks plus prospects to take back a bad contract, kind of what Columbus is doing. So um, that's going to be crazy to see. Uh, next year with the Penguins. So this is actually really interesting. I thought, and a lot of people thought, the Penguins were going to go 7-3. They actually went 4-4. Four and four. So some pretty good forwards available here in Hagelin and Russ. But at the end of the day, I think they're still going to take Flurry, Without a doubt, the best goalie available in the expansion draft. And I mean, Flurry, in my opinion, is one of the best goalies in the league. Like, uh, you can say what you want, but I think it's pretty easy to make that argument. Like, without him, the Pittsburgh Penguins do not get by the Washington Capitals. And you have to remember, the Capitals were the best team in the regular season. So... Um, some people, I think, forget just how good of a goalie Flurry is. In terms of just raw value, best player available, it is Flurry, I think, hands down. Uh, next year with the Zano State Sharks, so some decent uh, players available there. You have Bodker, $4 million, though, is a bit of an overpayment for him. A lot of guys are unsigned there, and I feel like taking a UFA, say, like Joe Thornton, isn't that reliable. A good chance he's not going to sign with you. Paul Martin's also on a pretty expensive deal, so I think they're actually going to take Aaron Dell, who's a pretty solid backup goalie, and he's making six hundred k this year, so super cheap contract. Um, gives you a backup goalie, and like I said already, they do not want to overpay for any contracts they're taking. Next up here with the St. Louis Blues, so this is another interesting one. They protected Ryan Reeves. He's like a fourth-line grinder who fights. No idea why they protected him over, say, Laterra, Perron, Yaskin, like any of these guys here. They're all decent players. Now, saying that, if I'm Vegas, I'm honestly just going to go for it all here and take Yakupov. Obviously, Yakupov hasn't looked that good the last few seasons, but you're getting a former first overall pick only from five years ago, 2012. And of all these players, Yakupov has the most potential, hands down, like it's not even close. Now, he could turn into a bust, but I feel like you're getting these players for free. The safe option, obviously, would probably be Latera Perron, one of those two guys. They're both 29. They're proven like NHLers can play in your top nine. Um, but they're both, you know, getting paid a decent amount. Latera almost $5 million, Perron almost $4 million. Yakupov you can give a new contract to whether it's a bridge deal or whatever and then just the marketing ability you have Yakupov on your team in Vegas first overall pick 
I feel like it's just the pick to make. You gotta, you know, can't make a safe pick everywhere, and I feel like they're just gonna take a risk here, go Yakupov. I could be wrong, but it is definitely what I would do. And next up here, guys, we have the Tampa Bay Lightning. So after making that Druin trade, uh, they're actually all good on forwards. They were gonna lose Nemestikov or Kalorn, but now all the forwards available aren't that great. So basically, it's a defenseman. You got Jason Garrison here, 32 years old, making almost $5 million. Um, and then it's Slater Cuckoo or Schuster. Really surprised they protected Coborn over Garrison, but Garrison's older, so I still think they go Cuckoo here. Uh, between him and Schuster, he's three years younger, has a bit more potential. And like I said, Vegas isn't winning anytime soon. They don't need a veteran like Garrison. They'll take the younger defenseman in Cuckoo, who could actually turn into something. Uh, next up here with the Maple Leafs, like the St. Louis Blues, really surprised they protected Matt Martin, fourth line fighter. They actually left Brandon Leipzig available, who put up over a point per game in the AHL this year, so I feel like that's an absolute steal for Vegas. Um, I really thought the Leafs were going to protect him, and that, and I thought that Vegas would probably take Kirby Reichel, but with Leipzig available, you have to take him. Even if he doesn't make the NHL this year, he could tear it up in the AHL for Vegas um, this season, and maybe a couple years he's making the team, so a uh, really good pick there for Vegas. Vancouver Canucks here. This is one of the teams like Arizona, like Carolina. There's really nothing available. So of all these players, you have to pick somebody. I think it's probably Brennan Gauntz, former first round pick, 23 years old, so he's still young. Obviously not a bad contract. He's not even signed. You could get him on a two-way deal still. And there's just nothing else here. Like people were saying Spiza. Taking Spiza from Vancouver, like they would have to give Vegas at least a second, maybe even a first to do that. Um, they're just going to try and get it here with whatever player. So they're going to take Gauntz. Honestly, they could even take another guy here like Grenier or somebody and not even sign him, just completely waste the pick. But I think they'll probably go Gaunt, somebody who still has a bit of value. Next up here we have Washington Capitals, and they actually have a ton of good UFAs available. You got TJ Oshie, Shankirk, Alsner, but no guarantee these guys will sign with Vegas. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't. Like a lot of these guys want to win now, and a lot of these guys might even already have intentions to sign with Washington. So if I'm Vegas, I'm taking Nate Schmidt, 25 years old, so he's a bit older, but he's a solid young defenseman, needs a new deal. I feel like you could probably get him for something like two or three years, around two and a half, three mil. And like I was saying, and like I've said so many times already, Vegas is not trying to win now, they're trying to win in the future. So uh, it doesn't really make sense to take like those veteran guys, especially a guy like Orpic, making five and a half million, just way overpaid. And the final team here, guys, we have the Winnipeg Jets. So on um, this one, goalies aren't that great that are available. Defensemen really aren't that great for the ones available. I think the best pick here is probably Mark Dano, 22 years old. So another young player to add to the team, making 850K this year, which is a really good contract probably could play in your bottom six. So those are my picks, guys. I'm going to take a look here now at the team. I also want to make sure this team fills out all the requirements. So as you can see, we drafted 30 of 30 players, 14 of 14 forwards. I really feel like they're going to go heavy on defense as defensemen in general have more value. So we'll take the minimum forwards there of 14, defense 12 of 9, goalies 4 of 3, like I said. Any more than four goalies, and they might screw themselves if they have a goalie that's good enough to play in the AHL, like start in the AHL, and they have to send them to the ECHL, or just have them scratched. It could turn out bad. So I think four goalies is the max they'll take. 20 of 20 contracts there. Um, a lot of the best players available, in my opinion, are RFAs. So you kind of want to max out those 10 RFA spots. Minimum cap hit, we have 49.3. So uh, 6 million over the minimum cap hit there. Obviously, a ton of cap days to work with. A little over 20 million. I'm not sure if this includes Sleeper Chef's contract or not, though. So um, if it does, it'd probably be right around 20 million, which is obviously awesome for Vegas to have all that cap space. And here is a look at the team with those 30 picks. Like I was saying, I think it's a very competitive team. And you have to remember, too, they're going to have so many picks. So right there, guys, look at the forwards as well as the salaries. So you can see majority of these players I picked are either not signed right now or they only have one year left on their deal. So if it doesn't work out or whatever, Vegas can trade them at the deadline or just not re-sign them next year. They don't have to worry about any bad long-term contracts. Like the longest contract, I think, is Eakins here at three years and then Bogosian and Vatten both in three years, but all three of those players are decent players. Uh, the defense here is actually like a very solid defense. Um, definitely not the worst defense in the league. Like, it's probably better than Detroit's, honestly, so um, that's pretty telling. And then in goal here, you have Flurry to be the starter. Um, either Picard or Dell would be the backup, and then you have the other one with Subban, who will be your two AHL goalies. So honestly, the team looks pretty good, and like I was saying, um, right here is a look at their draft picks for the next three years. As you can see, of course, right now they have a pick in every round in 2017, 18, and 19. Mark my words, in a few days, this is going to look crazy. I could honestly see them having over 15 picks this year alone, probably a few firsts. Like, Vegas is going to be loaded with picks, loaded with prospects, and have a decent team. It's just going to be crazy to watch unfold. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.